All right, now we're on chapter 12, Women in the Middle Ages. Now, our big question of this chapter is, what is it like to be a woman in the Middle Ages? How women lived. So far, you've been reading mostly about the lives of men in the Middle Ages. Unfortunately, there is less information about women in Europe during this time. However, there were some women whose lives were so extraordinary that they became famous. Most men and women of this time were peasants and serfs. Women had the same hard lives as their fathers, husbands, and brothers. Just like boys, girls did farm work when they were young. They had to haul water, tend to crops, and care for animals. All right, and this is kind of a picture of... Um, a rabbit that's been killed for dinner and this woman is carrying it over her back. Adult women spent much of their time weaving, cooking, feeding farm animals, and caring for children. During really busy times, women and men worked together in the fields. They needed to grow enough food for their lord of the manor as well as for their own families. So in other words, at harvest time, then the women would leave out of their home and then they would go work in the fields with their husbands and their brothers and their fathers and everyone would pull together in harvest time to bring in all the food. So poor health. In the Middle Ages, people had very different ideas about health and medicine than we do today. Many people died from diseases and few lived as long as the average modern American. Nobles and wealthy townspeople were a little healthier than serfs because their diet was better, and they certainly had enough to eat. But because people at the time had no understanding of germs or viruses, people did not recognize the relationship between good hygiene and good health. Okay, and hygiene simply means cleanliness. So think back to our previous chapter when we talked about how they didn't have indoor plumbing for bathrooms and how bathroom stuff would just flow through the streets. Well, people would walk through that. They would play on the streets in that. And so it definitely wasn't very good hygiene, right? Now, as a result, natural occurrences such as giving birth could be dangerous. Women and their babies often died in childbirth. And even if they survived childbirth, many young children would die of illness before they reached adulthood. So there was much sadness and tragedy in the lives of women in the Middle Ages. Let's read about convent leaders. There weren't many career choices for women either. One possibility was to choose a religious life. In the religious world of the, of the Middle Ages or medieval times, sending a daughter to a convent was thought of as an act of religious devotion. So a strong loyalty to the cause or their belief. Convents were like monasteries, but for women. The members devoted their lives to God. And just as monasteries had a big impact on life in the Middle Ages, so did convents. Women in convents devoted their lives to prayer and to helping people. However, even in the convent, their lives were different from the girls who came from wealthier families. While everyone prayed together, the poorer girls worked in the kitchens and in the fields. Basically, they did the same kinds of jobs their families did outside the convent walls. The leader of a convent was called an abbess. During times of conflict, some leaders of convents were successful negotiators. They arranged peace agreements between warring no nobles, and an abbess is simply the, the leader of the convent. And then we're going to read about composers, and those are people who write music. So Hildegard of Bingen, and she's also known as Hildegard von Bingen because she's German, and so her name would have been Hildegard von Bingen. Even though little is known of women generally, the fame of one medieval nun has lasted to this day. 
As evidence of this, we can listen to modern recordings of the music she wrote in the Middle Ages. She is one of the earliest composers in history whose life story is known to us. She wrote a musical drama or play. It is the only one of its kind known from this period. Hildegard of Bingen was born in 1098 in Germany. She began having religious visions when she was a child. So this vision is just this image that comes in their mind or their imagination that others cannot see. The visions were powerful and affected her greatly. In one vision, for example, she described how the heavens were opened and a blinding light of exceptional brilliance flowed through her entire brain. When she was still quite young, her parents sent her to live with a famous holy woman who was to be her teacher. This woman's name was Huda, and we say it Huda because it's German. Huda taught Hildegard how to read and write. Hildegard also received her religious education from Huda. Slowly, people began hearing about Hildegard and her remarkable visions. Her visions inspired her to write beautiful music, poems, plays, and books. Hildegard's works were admired by the Pope and by other religious and political leaders. Eventually, Hildegard started a new convent in the German town of Bingen, which is why you say Hildegard of Bingen. Some of Hildegard's visions, such as this one of the Tree of Life in this picture, were described and illustrated in books during her lifetime. So if you look around the very center, there's four different colors. And then spanning around that are pictures of people working the land. All right, let's read about trade and learning. We're on page 91. Although women had fewer options than men, it was possible for women to go into business with their husbands. And if their husbands died, they were allowed to continue to work. There were some women who managed to start up their own businesses, though this was not typical, meaning it didn't happen very often. Historians have found records of women who worked as brewers, so they would make like brewing beer, alcohol, which we know as ale in this time, glass makers, weavers, and in other trades. One important development during the Middle Ages that sadly did not benefit women was the creation of universities. And we know a university is a school where you learn um, advanced things. However, women were not allowed to go to the university. The first universities were started in Italy, England, and France. These universities advanced learning in many areas, but women were not allowed to attend. This made it impossible for women to be officially trained for careers in law or medicine. Women in convents, though, continued to learn and share knowledge. Certain convents trained women to teach young children and others trained women to provide health care and help families. So there is a picture here, and this would be a university um, scene. So the universities then obviously looked a lot different than the universities that we attend now. Um, there's some similarities too, but they were quite different. This is an image of life at the University of Paris in the Middle Ages. Okay, and I believe this is the end. Yeah, so we're going to stop reading here, but I want to spend a little time going through um, some questions to make sure we're all understanding. So based on what we've read so far, how were medieval men and women's lives alike and different? So I want you to sit there and think about that. How was a man's life different from a woman's life? Okay, men and women serfs and peasants, they both had similar responsibilities related to farming, right? So it said, that even though the women normally worked in the home and cared for the children and made the food, 
when it was harvest time, they would go and work in the fields with the men. So that's some similarities. Both often experienced poor health because of their living conditions and their diet. Um, and because they didn't um, know about germs and how that spreads and cleanliness and all of that, proper hygiene. Um, we did learn that women were especially at risk of dying from childbirth. And then some of the other differences in men's and women's lives included fewer opportunities for a career, right? Because a woman couldn't attend universities. She could only, it was very rare to start her business, but she could have a business with her husband and could continue it if her husband died, but it was rare to start her own business. Um, she could go to and commit a life to religion and live in a convent and where she would help other people and live a life of prayer and devotion to God. And then it said that women serfs also spent their time leaving, cooking, and like we said, caring for the children in the home. So why do you think poor hygiene was common during the Middle Ages? Simply modern science, right? They didn't have the same science technology. They didn't know, they hadn't studied about or figured out that viruses were transmitted by dirty hands. They didn't know about hand washing. I mean, I'm sure like if their hands were black with dirt, they would go wash them. But if their hands appeared clean, would they know that there's viruses lurking there that can be transported? Somebody wipes their nose, you know, and, and then shakes hands with someone, right? They didn't know about germs and viruses. So they didn't know that that meant, bad hygiene meant poor health, that you could get sick. So that's one thing that is a good thing for modern science, right? We know about those things. How would you describe people's overall health and medical care during the Middle Ages? What were the similarities and differences between the noble's health and care and the serf's health and care? Well, I would say that there, the germ spread viruses were probably equally bad between both. However, the nobles had slightly better health than the serfs because they had better diets and more to eat. Um, but both of which, serfs and nobles alike, were both much worse in, off in health than we are today. Why did some families send their daughters to convents? I'm sure they had many reasons, but one of which might have been that they had a certain limits, right? There weren't careers really that they could go into. So often the families would send them to the convent because they thought they would have a better life there. Um, let's see here. It was also a sign of religious devotion for a family to send their child to a convent. All right, talking about Hildegard of Bingen, why do you think Hildegard of Bingen is one of the best known women of the Middle Ages? What do we read about? She was a composer, right? She wrote music, she wrote poems, she wrote books, and then her music has been performed for hundreds of years, keeping her fame alive. Even when I was in college, I took a, a music appreciation class I had to go to a concert where they played her style of music and we learned about it. And it's very different than what we listen to today. So I encourage you to research that and listen to a piece of her music. It's kind of eerie sounding. If I can find a, a short video, I'll add it onto our assignment just so you can hear it. Would it have been easier or harder for a man with talent similar to Hildegard to succeed in the Middle Ages? easier, right? It was usually easier for a man to do just about anything over a woman. Men who did the kind of work she did were often widely known and even more influential. It took a lot of work on her part before she ever received any fame. And after she was gone is when she received the most fame, but she had already been 
dead for a while. So do you think Hildegard of Bingen would have been as famous as she was, more famous or less famous if she had been a man? So we would say we would probably be safe to say she would have been more famous, right, if she had been a man than her being a woman. Um, how could a woman in the Middle Ages end up running her own business? Talked about this a little bit a minute ago. There were a couple ways she could. It was very rare for her to start her own business, but we said she could go into business with her husband and she could continue in that business if he died. But it was a lot more rare to start a business just as a woman herself without a man doing it with her. Why did the development of universities not benefit women? They weren't allowed to attend, right? They couldn't go to a university. It wasn't until many, 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 many years later, until honestly more of our modern day before women have been allowed to go to universities. So what impact would that have had on her career choices? She wanted to be a doctor, could she be one? Nope, there weren't women doctors because they couldn't go to universities to earn that title of being a doctor. So life was a lot different to be a woman over being a man in medieval times. So reflect on our big question. What was it like to be a woman in the Middle Ages? Gentlemen, would you have liked to have been a woman in the Middle Ages? Even ladies, would you like to go back in time and be a woman in the Middle Ages? Probably not, right? We, we have a lot more freedoms nowadays than women did in the past. Anyway, good thing to think about.